Christine Tiley, and I want to encourage you to persist with your follow-up, but without being pushy. Far too many people are afraid of hearing the word no, and I get it. I used to be afraid of rejection too. For the first two years in my business, I hardly achieved anything. I was afraid to ask, and by avoiding the ask, I rejected myself in advance. I was saying no to myself before anyone else had the chance to. I'd like to share how I got over that fear and built a multi-million dollar business. There's an art or maybe a science to asking and getting what you want. I found the book, The Aladdin Factor by Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield very helpful. They recommend asking as if you're expecting to get a yes and assuming that you can get a yes and to keep asking repeatedly. Persistence has been key to my success. You want to keep asking because they might say yes when they're in a better mood, when their circumstances have changed, when you have a better offer that suits their needs, or when you've learned to ask better. To encourage myself to take action, I gamified the process. I started by rewarding myself with $1 for every follow-up call, regardless of the outcome. My goal was to get myself moving and to overcome my fear of rejection. When I'd made enough calls, I treated myself and my husband to a night out at the movies. As I got better at making the follow-up calls, I moved on from giving myself a dollar and made myself a, a star chart. I gave myself a gold star every time I made a call. The reward you choose doesn't matter. The process of rewarding yourself for taking action gives you a boost of dopamine in the brain, which reinforces the action. By doing this, you will notice it gets easier and easier to follow up. The statistics that have most inspired me to keep going come from a marketing specialist at Notre Dame University. They found that 94% of all salespeople quit after the fourth call. However, 60% of all sales were made after the fourth call. I didn't want to keep missing out on 60% of potential business because I wasn't following up enough. So I started keeping all my follow-up information in a leads book, but you could also use a spreadsheet. I'm old school. I allocate one page per lead and I keep track of my follow-ups with dates and notes. I try to add personal information so contact from me feels personal and friendly. I also make sure I vary the method of follow-up. Sometimes it's a phone call, then a text message, other times I send something in the mail. This keeps me in their thoughts, but it doesn't feel too repetitive. I have some leads that I'd been following up with for five years before finally getting a yes. Persistence paid off eventually. At this point, I want to make sure you understand that I'm not a bulldozer when it comes to follow-up. I not only vary the means of follow-up, so I don't hound them with the calls, but I also always allow them to opt out. I don't want to be pushy or spammy, so I'm keeping it light and friendly. So keep going until you get a yes, because persistence is a massive cornerstone of success. I was told by a mentor long ago to think of follow-up like offering everyone cake at your wedding. Some people love wedding cake and eagerly say yes. Others say no. Maybe they're on a diet. Maybe they're allergic to gluten. Or maybe they just don't like cake. The bride doesn't take it personally. She just offers it to the next person. I like to think of everyone I follow up as wedding guests. I have something wonderful to offer and it may or yep. may not be for them. My job is to find the ones who want it. Who can you offer your cake to today?